I want to pray with people that are very discouraged. Let's, let me get three. Come forward. I will ask them. Come. One. Let me get another two. Three. Okay, this is fine. Let's get three only. Come, sister. Okay. Let's get mics. We ask. Let's start. We ask. Maybe we'll learn from them. Why are you discouraged? I can't pray anymore. What I'm going through, Pastor Ash, I've been through hell all my life. So I can't even pray anymore. What I used it? to pray. What is it that has discouraged you? Poverty, hatred, a lot of things. All right. On this you are saying now, I want to tell you again. Hatred, poverty, whatever, rejection is very good for you. It's really very good. <laughs> I will tell you, I will tell you why it's very good. You don't know. You know God, especially rejection and hatred, is very, very good. Because God doesn't want people to know how you were blessed. Amen. You know, God will make these people to leave you. To leave you. So that they must never know your genesis. Amen. Thank you. You hear me? Yes. Thank you. The moment you see, sometimes you don't know. God will make people to hate you, not even calling you know what. The moment you say they gather your courage, when you gather your courage, these people, God doesn't want them to, because they can kill you. They can be the source of the people who connect with killers. Amen. Thank you, Daddy. You hear what I'm trying to say? Yes. Gather your courage from today. Enjoy that hatred. Remember what the Bible says. Blessed are you. Thank you, When Daddy. people say all kinds of things. Thank you. Eh? Thank you. If you do that, I'm telling you, you must reach a level. Listen, if you reach a level where you find you are lonely, alone, speak like Jesus, I'm not alone. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. And because I spoke with you that I'm seeing you giving us a testimony now. Amen. Thank you. I receive. All right. Let me get another one. Apostle, I want God to help me. I'm facing hidden attacks. I cannot sleep at night and I cannot pray anymore. Are you a pastor? Not yet, but I have a calling. Okay, I'll tell you what you can do. Not yet, but you have a calling. Remember the book of James 5. He who is suffering must pray. You know, what makes you to fail to sleep? What is that? I'm worried about many things. The Bible says there's no worry that will add anything to our heads or to our body our stature. What you can do when you can sleep, it's a great opportunity for you to pray. Pray, listen, it won't be easy. Prayer is a battle, it's a fighting. It won't be easy. The first time when you pray, it's like you are just talking alone. You are like talking alone. Even tomorrow, you do the same, talking alone. Listen, if you can't sleep, you start to pray. You see sleep coming. But if you reason things, your flesh becomes awake. You start to hear your heart heavy. You hear what I'm trying to say? Yes. What you need to do, wake up. If possible, if the place where you are is safe, go outside. Begin to say, thank you, Lord. I thank you for this situation I'm going through. I'm very happy. When Lazarus was in the grave, you said, thank you, Lord. You know that you answer prayer. You carry on praying. You begin to thank God. You begin to hear your eyes heavy because your spirit will be expanding, your flesh weak. But now, it's contrary now. Your flesh becomes stronger and your spirit is dying. And when the spirit is going like this, your heart can't sustain it. I'm sure you understand that. Yes. So wake up. If you can't sleep, it's a time, a good time for you to pray. Go and try it. Now, when you do that, 
the issue of calling will be clear to you. Yes, sir. Right now it's not clear. You don't even know yourself. So God bless you. Um, I am discouraged because I feel like my soul is taken away from me. It's hard to pray. I have no emotion, no any feeling to Where's do. Where's your anything. husband? Where is my husband? He's at home. You are with him? Yes. And what is your problem? With my your, with your husband. We are disconnecting. You are disconnecting. Yes. I don't know if it's me disconnecting with him or we both disconnecting, but I yeah, see a problem. That, with that's him. the reason why you are failing to pray. Because look here. Uh, how do you use the word disconnecting? Can you tell me the meaning of disconnecting? You disconnecting with your husband? Dis As for me, I think it's like he's. I am moving away from. I'm not myself. Me, myself, my emotions are not there. There's no feeling. There's no feeling in the heart. Look here, Sissy. You are the one who's causing problem. You understand? Yes. You are causing problem because you know what your husband wants. Huh? Mm -hmm. So you don't need to look at your feelings. Look here what the Bible is saying. The, I'm just answering by the Bible. It says the woman's body belongs to her husband. And the man's body belongs to what? To the wife. So if you are going away and you still talk about your emotions, your affections, and you're the one who's going away, bring yourself back. How? You understand? Yes. Allow this man to be your husband again. Huh? That, but but okay. if now you are trying to go away and say, I'm no longer feeling this man, and you are counting mistakes he has done, automatically you won't pray. Because the Bible talks about forgiveness. Yourself, bring yourself back. Go to the bathroom, wash yourself, come clean. You know what your husband wants. Are you hearing me? Yes. You'll be able to pray. Mm -hmm. You hear me? But if now you look at your own emotions, I can't feel this man. What do you want to feel? <laughs> I mean, you, you must get rid. Listen, I'm, I'm telling everyone who's watching our program. Everyone. A man is not created for the woman. It's the woman who's created for the man. I don't know if you're hearing me. So now... You as a wife, avail yourself. Don't say, I can't feel this man. No, there are times where you won't feel this man. Because you're not created, you are created for him. He must feel you. Oh. You must stop this thing, my sister. Go back to bathroom. Wash yourself. I want to know if I'm not specifically speaking about my husband. It's like my soul is dead. No, your soul is not dead. It okay. must start from the house. Charity begins in the house. It must start from home. Listen, look here. Like, are you a pastor? Yes. Eh? Yes. So if you're a pastor, you cannot preach a good message if you are failing to preach in your house. I'm telling you now, you must flow. When I come here, I'm flowing from home there. Amen. If I want to be, I mean, amazing here with people here, and I'm disconnected there, I would be disconnected everywhere. Amen. So, sister, please rise up again. Be a wife. You know your husband. Be a wife. And then gather yourself together. Don't listen to your emotions, your feelings, whatever. Allow your husband to listen to his feelings and avail yourself. 
and you will be able to pray. Go and sit down. Um, I was discouraged, but after the, me the message, I, I feel that I've gathered the strength. But one thing that was discouraging me is the support. I feel like maybe at home I do not get support, but not really my husband, but family, and again sometimes in ministry. But after the message, I feel encouraged. You are in the ministry? Yes. Who is your husband? At this present moment, is at work. Let me ask you a question. Uh, I heard you mentioning the family. Yes. What kind of support do you want from your family? Uh, because for an example is that I will go and preach to them and take them to church. But when we get to church, you begin that what you expect your sons and daughters to do them, they don't do it. So I feel like they do not support. The, the family? Yes. Family, you mean your children in the church? Not really. My siblings, my parents. Yes. Those are the, I mean, you need to know if you're a pastor. Those are the people you need to know that Satan can use them better. You understand? Yes. Devil will never use someone who's far away from you. Amen. Eh? Amen. Devil will never use, he must use people who knows you. Even Jesus faced the same. Yes. The Bible said they never believed in him. They were telling Jesus, Jesus, why are you always doing things hiding? Go to Jerusalem and show yourself. If you are discouraged by the family, no. You must get out from your family. You understand? Yes. Love them, pray for them. Look here. I'll give you the people that must discourage you today. Number one is your family. Number two is your husband. You hear me? Yes. These people are around you must discourage you. If your husband is not discouraging you, your family, there's a problem with your Christianity. So, it will be your courage now that will take you forward. Amen. So, please, can you just kick this discouragement away? You rise up again. You cannot change your family. They know you better than yourself. Amen. It's not true. It is. Huh? It is. They know you. They know your mistakes, they know your failure, they know everything about you. You speak with them the name of God. If they are not changing, you leave it them to God. You have spoken. Yes. Eh? We can't change people. God, God loves you. God loves you. God Amen. bless you. Amen. Most of the time, small things are becoming a weapon of the enemy to destroy us. Small things. You know, if we talk about discouragement, I know discouragement. You must reach a level where people have to discourage you and show you. If people have not shown you that you are going nowhere, they must tell you straight that you, you are stupid. Because remember the Bible said they must revile you. The word revile, it means they must instruct insulting you. The word revile is not talking about cursing you. No, they are instructing you with insults. And show you you don't have a direction. You are stupid. Can you see? You are supposed to be doing this. Look at yourself. It must start very close to you. If it's not happening to you, you're not a Christian. If you have never met that you're not tempted, you must reach a level where people cause you pain. It's not only, only family. Even inside the church. Inside, when now you're supposed to be tempted, I mean tested nicely, it will be done by people inside the church. You have a friend, you are talking together, talking together, the friend. One day that friend will tell you, it's like your life is going away. Let's talk friendship. Have you ever found a friend say, it's like your life is going away, let's talk friendship. Sorry, I don't want to work with you again. Sorry. Have you ever met something like that? 
You must go through that. If you go through that, I can tell you, you are about to be celebrated. Yeah. But if you want to be accommodated, always, you want people to beat you at the back. Yeah, you are nice. Yeah, whatever. You are. You are, you are whatever. I mean, there have to be a time when you wear clothes. No, what's the word? Shapile today. What's the word? Shapile. Even when you are walking, you know, when you are passing, you just hear, Shem. I'm sure you're hearing what I'm trying to say. So if you are. If any wave takes you there and there, you're not a Christian. You must reach a level where you affect people around you. They must speak to show that there is something in you. 